right, so hello guys, it's David, and I have a very special guest with me today. Uh, her name is Sara, and Sara has been selling very, very part time since 2018 or 2017, summertime. And Sara went full time on a February of 2019, and her success speaks for itself. So, Sara, thanks for joining us, it's a privilege. Oh, no. It's a pleasure to, to be on here. Oh, hi, that's great. So, I would like to start from with the very beginning, uh, your early days, because if and when someone sees someone succeeding like you did, so you have you went full time in a in a few years time, and they may think of you that you may have had some special background. They may think that maybe somebody uh, put you in this position where you could not do anything but succeed. But if I'm right, you are really coming from a very humble roots. So, Sarah, could you tell us a little bit about yourself in your early years? And also, one go what got you hooked up in a reselling business in the first place? Okay, yeah. Um, well, I grew up on a farm. Um, okay. And for most of my career, I've been an insurance broker. Um, right. So, almost 20 years selling insurance. Oh, wow. um, and what got me set, uh, into reselling is we moved house um, and we wanted to put an extension or onto the house basically um, and we were part way through it and the builders right. went bust and we lost about £30,000. We couldn't get any more loans, our credit card was completely maxed out um, wow. and we were stuck as the house was you know there was it was open to the elements wow. basically didn't even have a roof on um didn't have any ceilings it was just a real state um, so i decided that i would you know i needed to make some more money because right. i needed money um and i've always liked to go into car boot sales and charity shops All right. um and i just decided to make my hobby work for me um i didn't ever think it would it would turn into me going full time. I just as right. a way to try and help pay off um, the debts that we had and try. Wow, and get that, that, that is shocking. I mean, to hear your experience that you basically you had to find something to supplement some income. Yeah. And yeah. also, I used to work for an insurance company as well. Did you? Did you? <laughs> I did for domestic in general. Oh right, yeah. All right, so. All right, so that is interesting to hear what that actually you have you were forced to go into it. Now, pretty much you were forced to find alternatives. So, before starting in business as a reselling, uh, as a reseller, did you have other plans to do uh, other things when reselling, something else part time? Uh, no, no, I didn't do I didn't do anything else. Really, I literally right. just you know did my. Uh, did my normal job and came mm -hmm. home and did housewife things and it wasn't really until you know this happened to us we were desperate um, oh, right. that I realized that I could perhaps make a little business out of it and it just you know it did better than I thought it would <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to hear and because you're really you're bringing really high numbers right now just to mention a few milestones you have hit 12,000 pounds in 90 days period. Was it on the 5th of April? Uh, yeah, I think it was, yeah. And another milestone you hit was that you had, uh, another milestone you hit that you had within a period of one year, you haven't had a single day which would be no sale day. That's right, yeah. Again, yeah. congratulations on that. So, so tell me, Sarah, when, you, when I asked you, what, what time did you start in business, you said that you started with, is it 2017? Yes. Yeah. And it, but it was very, very, very part time and it was summertime of 2017. So, did you do it so much part time because you enjoyed it and you started doing it full time because you needed that extra money? Or, I mean, why 2017 so much part time but then going full time in 2019? What happened in this period of time? Yeah, okay, so when I started in 2017, it was very much a, oh, I'm going to see if I can make money from buying some things and selling right. 
back there. And um, I mentioned it to my husband, and he was like, well, okay, but, you know, I think he thought, well, right. how much money are you going to make? Right. Um, and it just really took off. Um, I found some really great things, and I was, you know, really just lucky that um, my sales were, were going really well. So what started off as a little part-time thing, right. you know, was, was, getting, was keeping me really, really busy. Right. I, it, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and it got to the end, sort of, yeah, towards the end of 2018, and I started thinking, do you know what, I think I can make this a full-time thing, mm. but it was, it's a really difficult step to make because I wasn't, I wasn't earning enough to cover my wage that I was earning in my normal right. job, Yes. but I didn't have enough time to build the business up to get to that without actually leaving my job. So wow. it's kind of a chicken and egg where you say to yourself, well, I can't leave my job until I'm, until I'm turning over a certain amount yes, of reselling, but you just don't have enough hours in a week because you're doing another job. So um, in the end, my husband said, look, just, you know, take the plunge, just do it wow. and see what happens. And luckily it really worked out. Well, congratulations. And just to clarify, you said you were ready to make this jump. So, yeah. did you completely quit your full-time job, and did you completely run the free selling business for a hundred percent? Did I what? Sorry. Uh, did you? So, when you said you made this jump uh, at 2019 to go full-time, so does yeah. that mean that you qu that you quit your job as an insurance broker? Yeah. Yeah. And you so don't have any other job apart from yeah. reselling. No, no. So I. In, um, in, in January, um, I handed in my note, because I had it in my mind that yes. at some point in 2019, I would leave, I would leave my, my, full, my job. Um, I wasn't actually full-time, I was doing about 30 hours a week. Um, right, yes. Because I knew it was there, like the promise was there, I then couldn't wait. You know, you, if you think, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit my job in June or whatever, Okay. I just no, I'm no, no, I know I'm going to do it. I just want to do it now. So, uh, yeah, I handed in my notice in the January. And and exactly, it's easy to do, easy not to do. And you, when, but when you make that jump, it is yeah. really easy to get into it, and especially yeah. when you are actually seeing to things to start working on. So okay, so this I want to talk a little about it a little bit more. So. When you went full time, I'm sure you had some sort of subconscious fears that what if it don't work? So how long did it take for you to start feeling comfortable that you made the right decision to go full time on eBay yeah. reselling? Yeah, I think probably a couple of months um, to start wow. with. As soon as I'd handed in my notice, I was like 50-50 excited right. and terrified um, because you know, it is a big risk and what what happens if it does fail or, you know, I just can't make the sales. But yeah, I think probably by the April, um, I was confident that it was, it was growing each month and uh, All right. you know, it was going to be good. Well, congratulations. I mean, it's, neat. it's really nice to hear success stories such as this, because I think many people believe in some sort of things that I, I don't know, uh, that we get be sales because we have some sort of a magical background that somebody is helping them out or we are buying things from some sort of suppliers where we had the relationships but this example this example really shows that well you went on your own you found the products and you said yeah, in I the did. beginning I, yeah yeah i think the, basically i i work really hard i i enjoy working hard and doing my best and so that's really all it needs I mean okay you need some luck because you know you've you've got to be the right place the right time to find stuff sometimes but um, if you are working really hard and trying your best then it will come to you yeah it is indeed and it, it is that simple yeah S yeah so I think for all the people even now watching us I mean when we, when we are going to watch this interview video podcast there are so many business owners out there, resellers, new starters, even uh, 
even some people who are running small businesses uh, we overcomplicate things we don't do something because we think it will be really hard to start doing it we overcomplicate things we try to learn every single every single formula about the business before we start doing a business why do you think people overcomplicate things uh sometimes i think it's the fear of starting as well why um, I, I agree but why why do you think so um i think they just it's it's a way of procrastinating and putting off actually doing um and i mean everyone learns a different differently so maybe it is good for them to really do a lot of research beforehand but you know there comes a time when you could you really need to learn by doing yeah i agree and 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 like you also mentioned that everybody sets different goals yeah uh, that, that was posted on one of your posts on instagram and by the way i will also leave a link below under this video's description directly to your instagram account and congratulations you also have 2000 followers okay. on instagram that's great i don't know how that's happened i must <laughs> well you do provide a lot of value oh, uh, okay. i mean as far as you can see people like to see it. you're showing to people how much you paid for a certain item where did you buy an item yeah. and how long did it take for you to sell it yeah well, yeah. it, it gives a perspective for people. I, I believe there are a lot of people sitting on a fence and thinking about it. Should I do it too? So, all right, Sarah. So now you are at this point where your grow, your business is growing steadily. It is consistent. You you're having consistent numbers. You hit a twelve thousand pounds milestone for ninety days. Yeah. Uh, so, I want to know a little bit more about your psychology. Uh, how did it change you knowing that the things are working and that the things are going the right way but also tell me Sarah what was one of your weakness and how you either made it your strength or how did you overcome it right that's a good one um, one of my weaknesses is definitely that um, I try and push myself too hard sometimes when I get overwhelmed. I, um, the, so let's say I, I mean, we can't at the moment, but let's just say I went sourcing and had a full day of charity shops and I came home with 60 or 70 items. Wow. I would then wow. get like really sort of, um, I would pressure myself thinking, right, you've got, you've got all this stuff, it's going to be in everyone's way, you need to get that done and listed in the next two days because wow, wow. You know, it's a mess. So I, that's my weakness is I put too much pressure on myself and I, and I get overwhelmed by it. And so what, obviously I've, I've noticed that that is my weakness. And so what I do is um, I tell myself to take a step back and only do a certain amount of day. So you just take a step back and you do what you can do during the day. Do you put aside some sort of hours for a week time? How many hours will you work a week? 40 hours for a week or 50 hours for a week? Um, I don't do that and I don't actually make a note of how many hours I work. Um, probably because it's too many. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Makes sense. I mean, that's exciting because you do work from home. Yeah, yeah. And I, I assume like, if you can, yeah. I yeah. like the flexibility of it, so I don't want to say to myself, right, I'm going to work between nine and three right. every day, um, because I, you know, I I'm affected by the weather. If I wake up and it's right, a really yeah. cool morning, I take the dogs out for a walk. Everybody, yes, everybody does. <laughs> um, if it's going to be a really hot afternoon, I'll say, right, I'm going to get all of my work done by lunchtime, and then I'm going to have an afternoon in the garden. All right. You know. Also, my husband, although it's been locked down now, but, you know, Indeed. before that, my husband works a lot at nights and weekends, so, you know, oh, I'm wow. going to be at home anyway, I might as well get some work done then. So, yeah, it's, the hours I work are very flexible, I work it around what's convenient to me, but that's really, yeah, the selling is that it will fit around however you want your life to be. Indeed, it makes sense, and, uh, yeah, it's great perspective. I, I assume as well, when you go to the charity shop or uh, to the cardboard sale, if you find 60 or 70 items, you're not going to leave them. You want to take it with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
All right, Sarah. So one more thing I noticed on your account, which which is, it's, it's a hashtag that you've been using on your Instagram account, uh, meet the reseller. And you oh, yeah. Yeah, and you have been using this hashtag maybe for a month or two now? Yeah. Uh, so I would like to hear a little bit of your philosophy around it. I mean, what does that mean to you? What does this hashtag mean to you? And what is the purpose of this hashtag? Uh, it was started as a way of building the community, really. So right. um, people could search the hashtag, hashtag, maybe find resellers that they didn't already know about, um, who weren't already following, but also to learn a little bit about how everyone else works. All right. um, and also keep us uh, a little bit less lonely during lockdown as well, which is really important because reselling is quite an isolating um, business. You do spend a lot of time on your own um, and, you know, it is good to be able to connect with the community. I personally have learned so much from other resellers um, and I have lots of people contacting me every day asking advice or asking questions. And I'm, oh, no. you know, I'm always answering them as quickly as I can. I think it's really important to share information. I'm not precious. I don't try and keep things secret. Um, yeah, we, I noticed, we noticed, I think, on your Instagram account how everything is transparent. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like even my Instagram account is FBA real. And yeah. That has been a part of us as well to be as transparent as I can be. Yeah. So so yeah, it makes sense. So does it impact you the way you write a post on Instagram before you publish it to be it to make it as useful as you can do, uh, or no? If you are adding this hashtag meet very seller, is there any specific information you want to be in on this hashtag? Well, that hashtag was started by someone else, and it was like a month long. Um, it was a month long thing to be involved in, so I think. Oh it was right. Like, um, so you had a different thing every day that everybody were, you know, to discuss essentially or show something about, share about. Um, and I, th I think it will happen again in April next year. All oh, right. It was on last year as well, so. All oh, right. Um, yeah. So it's just like one month thing for a year, yeah. and will yeah. be a new thing for the next month, or is not? Yeah. Well, I think it's it's. They used to do a meet the maker, which was like for self-employed people who oh, right. create things, um, and so resellers, I think, just thought, well, we we can do our own. You know, we can do that as well. So that's that's how it came about, really. But yeah, it's just essentially for a one month thing. All right. Um, I mean, that really provides perspectives. It gives. I mean. We, more people, mastermind, more ideas. I mean, it's really great, great perspectives here, beautiful. So, Sarah, tell me, back a few years ago when you said you had to start, uh, so what did you see in, uh, what did you see maybe in sourcing products from the charity shops or going to the car boot sales? Uh, what did you see that other people couldn't see yet? Like a lot of people are interested in doing something like this, but we just don't start. So what did you see? How did it, how did it all start? So why, you said you were always enjoying going to a car boot sale or uh, having a look at what charities has. But what did you see in it as an opportunity? Because when you started, you said people didn't expect you to, uh, to make of it such a success. Yeah. So what, what did you see that others couldn't see? Well, uh, it really is down to the reselling community on Instagram. That's that's really how I started. All because right. I was always going to car boot sales and I liked buying um, vintage things for my own home. I always used to look at the tag on Instagram, which was like car boot finds. Oh, yes. or, you know, um, and I noticed, I started noticing that people that I was finding on that hashtag were selling the items on. Right. It kind of blew my mind that you could <laughs> go to a car boot sale, which is something that I used to look forward to. It was a highlight right. of my weekend, honestly, um, and pick things up and make money from it. And I, uh, there were you know, people I was following, and they were so successful, and they were right. doing it part-time, and, and, I, and I kind of followed them, and they were being able to go full-time, and I was so inspired by them. <laughs> I'm, um, in, I'm in Sarah now. People are getting inspired by you. I, well, that's what 
that's kind of crazy because I yeah, can, look I at your numbers. Feel that you're going to be the person inspiring someone. But Indeed. look yeah, at your numbers. I, People I, asking you for help. You have two thousand followers. <laughs> <laughs> you have so much engagement on your posts. Yeah. Over, yeah. I, over hundred likes each. Lots of comments. I I honestly I I owe it to um, the the Instagram community because that's what inspired me. So that's what, and, it, and I think even now, it still gives you forward information, inspiration and knowledge. Yeah, oh definitely. I mean, I learn things every single day. That's the, the beauty of reselling, really. You'll, you'll never know everything. Um, and I learn so much every day from everyone. Indeed, no, especially now the lockdown is to be over within a few months, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so shops will be opening up and I think we will see new things, new yeah. trends. Yeah. We will need to as well to apply some new changes the way we are sourcing products. All right, so Sarah, you gave us so much great advice. And your Instagram, again, you have lots of followers. You have over 200, you, all, you have almost 300 posts. And it is such a great source of inspiration. And notice, and I mean, when I think about Instagram, so that is entire our history is written in our Instagram posts. And whenever we feel like we can always come back to see what was the first post that I wrote or that you wrote. So for example, for yourself, Sarah, the first post you wrote on Instagram was yeah. 7th of January, 2018. Yeah. And you posted your, your, your best sale of 2017, which has been two, I think, vintage cups from 1975. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so... It also is a lot of great information and it will add so much value for another thousands of people who will follow you. So let's, Sarah, I mean, let's summarize it right now. So what would you, what would be, let's say two or three most, um, most important habits that you shared that would help reseller, I mean, that would help a reseller, maybe a small business owner, but somebody in a reselling community to succeed. What would be two or three habits? Um, keep up to date on your administration. That's, uh, really, that's, I'm quite strict with myself, so every morning I will do what I call my daily admin. Right. I've put it on what my it? Instagram a few times and on my kind of day in the life thing in my stories. Um, just All to right. Try, just to try and encourage people to do some of their admin daily because, uh, you know, I see people post just before the 31st of January, they're posted that they haven't done any paperwork at all, all uh, right. you know, the previous, the other tax year, um, and they're going through all their receipts, and I, and I just, I try and encourage people to do, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of admin a day, and when it gets to when you've got to do your tax return, you it's already done, basically, because you've been doing a bit a day, so all stay right. organized, um, and also that helps you know what's going on in your business, if, if, you are doing your, let's say, 20 to 21 tax return, and you don't actually do it until January of 22, and yes. you haven't gone through any of your receipts or done anything, how are you keeping on top of your business? How do you know you're making money? How that do you know you're running it efficiently? So, you know, it's really important. That is really great advice. Um, other advice, what do I do? Um, <laughs> I mean, this is one of those which is all also very big. I mean, I see stories myself, people sharing, okay, it's tax year, let's do it. And we have entire pile, even we, these piles are not month by month. It's just a big pile for the entire yeah. year. And you're looking at yeah. it, it's shocked. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, you know, that kind of disorganization can be dangerous for your business, definitely. Right. So, so also, Sarah, you've been talking about that. You said, okay, in the beginning, you've been overworking a lot but you overcame it by compromising a little bit or if 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 you can you you may want to do it by tomorrow but you think okay what if i do it in two days so you compromised yeah. a bit about your work ethics yeah yeah yes definitely um to try yeah definitely try and pace pace myself and don't get overwhelmed by it and i see a lot of people getting overwhelmed by the piles of stock and yeah. some people get overwhelmed by it so much that they don't actually even list it because it gets to a point where they can't face it and so you know if you're just letting yourself drip feed a bit a day so basically what I do is um, I do set, uh, seven sort of 
listings where I've cancelled an old listing and I'm rehashing it and I do six completely new projects. That's what I call a day, a day's work. So you keep it as a habit. You want it to be a habit to keep on being consistent with an action. Yeah. yeah. You have a lot of active listings. Yes, eight, I do. Eight, yeah. 800 plus? Yes, yeah. And <laughs> Congratulations. And then there's sort of just, uh, just under 200 now scheduled. So that's oh, wow. another thing I like to do is I work ahead. So at the moment I'm two weeks ahead. Oh, I've wow. got things scheduled up. So that does mean that if, you know, if it's a really nice day and I think, oh, actually, I'm going to go off and do something else today, I don't have the pressure of thinking, oh, but I've got to do my work because I'm two weeks ahead. Right. Take a breather if I need to. Right, might be. It must be. So, so Rosanna, right? So, probably one of the last questions about this. So, you also have a lot of people. So, you have two thousand followers and more. People are watching your stories, but also a lot of those people are still sitting on the sidelines. We are watching. They are still panicking to begin somewhere. We don't want to begin. We want to get all the information we can get on their hands before we start, but we don't start. So what would you tell to these people? What would you recommend for a person who's sitting on a sidelines, wants to start doing it, but he's scared? What would you re recommend? Yeah, you've really just got to take the leap and just start small. So start with things in your own house. That's the best way to start. You don't have to spend money on stock. Mm -hmm. uh, right. You can just start selling your own items. And All right, so... Go. So, you know... That's, that's a good way to, to jump into it. Is it just to test the market if people are going to sell their items that they think should sell or to yeah. get a scale? Yeah. And also for them to learn the ropes of how to do it and is it going to suit them, you know. Um, lots of people watch resellers and think, oh yeah, I really want to do it. But actually, yes. they don't like packing parcels or, you know, there's, a, there's something they don't actually like doing. And until you start doing it, you don't know that it doesn't suit you. Yeah, exactly. But, if you start with a relatively low budget or even with things you already own, then you haven't lost anything. That's, that's true. That is very, very true. Again, gives a great, a different perspective from many people would think. So that's really a lot of great advice. So, right, Sarah, thank you very much. And just before we go, a very quick game. So I will tell you the name. Yeah. And tell me what you think in one or two words, no more. Okay. Let's go, Gary V. Yeah. Um, oh God, this is hard. <laughs> um, I like it. Okay, I'm going to say... What am I going to say? Mm. I'm going to say inspirational. Great. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Challenging. <laughs> Yeah, maybe um, one word. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing which comes to your mind at all, in general. <laughs> well, the first thing that's going to come to my mind is obviously going to be computers, but um, yeah, that's the first word that comes to my mind, but that's not very... Uh, it's not, very, it's not really what you're looking for, is it? But I... Yeah, we can, we can jump the bill, guys. eBay. Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say Royal Mail. Royal Mail. They are troopers. I honestly, I, do, I love Royal Mail. I, and they, do, they give such great service, even at the moment. I, I love them, so I'm going to go for troopers. Right. And uh, Boris Johnson? Oh God! <laughs> Too much. Oh God! You <laughs> <laughs> that out. No, I'm not a fan. So. <laughs> yeah, and probably the last one would be Cummings. Oh. Um. Liar. Liar. Yeah. 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 So, okay, so I said it's one of the last ones, but because the answers were about these two guys this way, so maybe the last one, Donald Trump. <laughs> Right. Near the top. He's near the top. Near the top of the most horrible. Yeah, just most despicable people. No, it makes sense. I'm glad we don't have him in the UK. I know. 
know. I, but we're, all, we're pretty close though, aren't we? That's the trouble. Yeah, like, but Boris Johnson and, and, yes, indeed. Even with a haircut, hairstyle is still uh, messy. Well, and it, all right, thank, so Sarah, thank you very much uh, well, for all the value you gave us, and yeah, I appreciate you giving this opportunity for me as well to do something. <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.